rappers and music producers. It's Curtis King, CurtisKingBeats.com, and today we're gonna go over 12 killers to your creativity when it comes to your music. Let's talk about it. Rappers and music producers, the quote goes, when you're in your head, you're dead. What does that mean? That means that when you are in your thoughts, when you're just thinking too much about the process, there's so many things that we do habitually that mess up our art before we can even give it a fair chance. When your energy runs dry, I already did a video about energy a few weeks ago that you can check out right here, but when your energy runs dry, you already know your art is sure to suffer right after that. So today, I wanna cover 12 things that we may think about, or 12 12 things we may physically do that literally mess up our creativity as we're starting to work on music. This applies to rappers and producers. Let's talk about it. Creativity killer number one putting way too many expectations on what the art is supposed to be. Maybe you get inspired listening to a new album, you heard a new beat, you heard somebody's particular song and you're like, yo, I need to make something in the same vein. I need to really use this energy that I have and create something. It needs to be just as cinematic. It needs to be just as crazy sound design wise. It needs to be all these things. And I think that when we put all these expectations on the music, we forget the very natural process that music is for us. Think about your most special beats. How much are that was formulaic how much of that was you just being in the moment it wasn't too much of a formula to it was it it was literally you being in the moment and saying look let's go after it let's try some new things oh this is nice let's ante it up let's keep going don't put too many expectations on what your art needs to be just let it be creativity killer number two comparing my art to others now we talked about that a little bit in the last example and then how you listen to something immediately you feel like it has to be that here's something that kind of blew my mind and it was kind of i guess common sense but what you got to take into consideration when you're reading the linear notes of somebody's album and you're so inspired by a song there's a reason why some of these songs that sound larger than life and they sound like multiple hands were involved there's a reason why it sounds like that look at the linear notes and you see there's a reason there's 12 names listed there there's a reason why you see the artist's government name. You see other writers in the room, maybe even people that generally will be featured because of their name, but because they're getting ghostwriting credits or whatever their arrangement is, they're in the background. Why? Because multiple hands touch this piece of art. For you as one individual to sit there and wreck your brain and say, oh my God, this beat or this song has to be just like this one, you're competing against 12 or 14 people. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying, look at what you're stacked up against and relieve yourself of the pressure to have to compare your your art to their art. Creativity killer number three, overthinking the process. Oh, it has to be like this. It has to be ingrained in what my brain says it has to be. You know what? That snare's not gonna work. I need to go through 14 other snares before I really, really, you know what? Not 14, 40 different snares before. You overthink the process. You're taking away the fun from the progress. You gotta sit there and just let the music be what it is. What I do sometimes, and this is another reason why it's hard for me to make music with other people in the room who are like very alpha male personalities because they're like, no, that sounds terrible. Don't put that there. I put placemakers. Sometimes I have a snare that I have no intentions of using because I'm using it as a placemaker to help me figure out the rhythm of the beat, to help me figure out a melody that kind of vibes with it. I even put a melody down with an instrument that I'm not gonna use and I make it ugly so I back reference it and come back and change it later. What you can't do is sit there and overthink everything needs to be this. It doesn't need to be anything right now. You just need to create. Number four, creativity killer obsessing over the minor details. I guess we're kind of overlapping some of these, but when you're obsessing over the minor details, what you're gonna find is that certain things just don't matter to the big picture. You can spend 20 minutes, 40 minutes on hi-hat rolls, but ask yourself, how many times has somebody came to you as a listener and say, yo, I didn't like that song, so I listened back to the hi-hat rolls and I was like, that's the truth. So you gotta figure out what are the minor details within this beat? What are the minor details within the actual studio session? Sometimes we're so ahead of the game in terms of, yo, I could just see a music video that does this, 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 and this. And it's like, yeah, that can be major later on, but right now we just gotta make a record. We gotta finish this record and give it the best we got. But sometimes we just think too far into the future and we end up going way past where our current destination is. It's good to have foresight, but it's also great, even better to focus on the right now, be in the moment. Creativity killer number five, 
getting too many people in your studio session and getting the wrong people in your studio session. I can't tell you how many times the energy of a studio session got killed simply because there were people in the room that did not need to be in the room. And sometimes it doesn't have to be when there's 13, 14 people. Sometimes it can just be that one extra person. That's just a little bit too much, too much, too soon. They come in hot. They come in ready out of 10 and it's like, yo, let us build this energy in the room. And especially for collaboration, that can be very detrimental. So I don't know if you're inviting people in or if somebody else you're telling to come into the studio session is inviting people in make sure they understand that when too many heads get involved let's not even talk about when opinions start getting thrown around nine times out of ten it's not going to be a positive outcome from that because everybody has their vision of what they think music should be now if you're all on the same page cool i'm just saying let's not get caught up in conversations that don't need to be had right now with these people who are not even necessary to be in the room creativity killer number six not taking enough breaks i know know that when you are energetic and you're very excited about the process, all you want to do is get it done. All you want to do is sit up here and, and, and finish out this beat, finish out this melody, finish out the mixing, the mastering, finish out and just boom, have this song done, have it uploaded on Spotify by the end of the night. I am definitely somebody who's been in that position many and many a times. What I have learned is that taking an extra day won't kill me. Taking some breaks during the process won't kill me. I don't have to get anything done right now. What I have to do is allow this to be the best that it can be and sometimes you do a disservice to yourself when you're working 10 hours all the way through you know I always talk about the pomodoro technique in which you're taking multiple breaks strategic breaks to allow yourself to come back at hundred percent after every break and I I tell you this is not a myth this is something that I do especially when I have to knock out a lot of work in a small amount of time I'm taking extra breaks it's kind of an irony of the situation but you actually get more work done because of that creativity killer number seven not knowing what direction I want to go in creatively there's so many times where I'll sit here and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to let creativity happen. I have a blank canvas. I'm going to play these keys and allow stuff to come tell me. But guess what? That works a lot, but it doesn't work the majority of the time. I end up making this weird combination of sounds that don't always fit cohesively. And I think that comes from me not having just some general focus, some big picture focus. And those big picture focuses can be, I want to make something that sounds like it would bang in a club. I want to have something that sounds like it'll bang even on a really stock system. I want to make something Something that sounds like a stadium crowd just clapping all together and this is the kind of music that you would have in a stadium environment these are big picture goals that will help you make specific decisions along the way as you're creating your music creativity killer number eight let's eyeball them drinking too much sugar too much caffeine before or during the session. You already know what the big cliche is once you go ahead and start piling back all this Red Bulls and all of the different energy drinks. I've been there. I even have yerba mates from time to time. I'm a little bit sensitive to caffeine, so I'll be twitching sometimes, but I can't do all that. Here's the problem with that is that you know the big cliche is that you're going to eventually crash and you're going to burn. And that's not the natural way that your body generates energy. I'll tell you one little cheat that helps for me is having raw almonds and and having them just in, 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 you know, in a regular form, not salted, not, you know, none of the crazy stuff, having raw almonds and just eating that because it's alkaline and it's already generating energy within your body, even even having water. Like, I'm not saying that you're not supposed to eat. I'm not saying eat like the food that your food eats. I'm saying that you need to have things that keep your lot on your toes, things that are not going to drain you along your creative process. And when you do this, you have this caffeine, you have this sugar, it jacks you up and then it cracks crashes you super crazy. Remember one time I had a session, it's a little little small story. I had a one session where we drank Kool-Aid in the beginning thinking I was going to boost us up. We had all that sugar in there and about an hour in we was like, fam, um, I don't even want to do this no more. We was looking so stereotypical. But anyways, that happened and we learned a valuable lesson. Don't use sugar when you're trying to get your energy up. It's good every once in a while to do that. Sometimes we need that extra boost. It's fast. It gets to the studio session. But in the long run, you don't want to rely on caffeine and sugar to boost your creativity. Creativity killer number nine, focusing more on my weaknesses than I'm focusing on my strengths. There's been many a times where I sit up here and I have to remind myself, this is not practice. This is not me trying to learn how to become a better piano player or become a better chord progression organizer. This is not the time for this. I'm making music, I'm cooking. And sometimes it's so easy to get in a place where you're like, ah, I gotta obsess over it. I gotta make this perfect. It's gotta sound like, ah, it's gotta be this. And what ends up happening is that you put all that 
that energy that could have been exerted towards what your strength was and improving that strength and you put that towards your weakness. I read in a book one time by John C. Maxwell called Failing Forward where he says you should focus on only the weaknesses, only improving the weaknesses that hinder your strengths. Doing anything else is just a waste of your energy. So when you're sitting here and you know what you're amazing at, go in first on that. Let that go ahead and be that. The energy that you have after you've already got momentum, you'll be inspired to do something maybe that you don't even have the ability to do because you're not a traditional player or whatever your weakness is, you'll have extra momentum and even energy to go ahead and create that. So focus on your strengths and improving and giving more muscle to your strengths instead of focusing all your time and energy on your weaknesses. Creativity killer number 10. And this is something on a very subconscious level I think is hurting a lot of producers in particular, hating on other producers. I guess it applies to rappers too, hating on other rappers. All of that hate is literally draining the very well of creativity that you're hoping to pull from. A friend of mine, Noah James, always says, get that hate out your heart and put it in your art. And I couldn't agree anymore. There's so many producers and rappers who get frustrated with their process. They get frustrated because they feel like they're on the outside looking in at other people who are doing well. And the best thing that they can do, or they feel like the easiest thing that they can do is jump on social media, jump on whatever, and just hate on everything. They hate on somebody else's beats. They hate on the way their beats sound. And it's like, well, that person's out here actually being successful. What are you doing? Use that energy for something else. If you still got that kind of hate in you, you need to put that towards your art because putting it anywhere else is a waste of both of your time. Don't do it. Creativity killer number 11, the fear of up. How many of us have a fear of failure? Fear of failure is called a tickophobia. There's so many of us that have the fear of failing. We have the fear that, okay, I just invested into this new melodic pack. I just invested into this new drum pack. I got everything that I need. I even just saved up for Omnisphere and I finally got it. I have everything that I need. And there's that fear of what if I have everything and my beats still are subpar or just not up to the standard that I have set. That fear is debilitating. That fear will disable your creativity. It will break it down into little pieces and you'll have to slowly but surely bring it all together. What I'm saying is not just get over the damn fear because I know that's a process, but what I'm saying is that understand that fear is at the source of that. Ask yourself what you're afraid of. Whatever you're afraid of, hit that head on. If you're afraid that your drum's about to be whack, well then you need to put down 20 or 30 more beats that are going to make you not care as much as you do right now. Because I feel like once you have more experience and more energy towards experience than you do your psychic abilities to predict how people are going to anticipate or even listen to your music, you will find that your success will come after you put in the work. I found that I was at my most fearful throughout my career when I was sitting here speculating what was going to happen next instead of just putting foot to pavement and getting the work done. And creativity killer number 12, the very, very last one, not spreading your creative energy in other places outside of your music. I understand you wanting to accomplish your goals. I understand having passion. I understand having so much energy built into you that you just, oh, I just gotta get out here and I gotta get it. But here's the thing about it. You still got a life to live. You still got life outside of music. People who say things like music is everything. I believe that comes from a place of fear as well. A lot of people put a lot of pressure on what this needs to be. This has to, no, if I don't make it here, I'm going to be a failure. And that's just not the truth. There are so many things that you are great at. So many things that you have the ability to share with others, things that people wouldn't even know of you. So many, you know, weird little tricks or weird little talents that you have that they're like, I've never seen a producer with the ability to do. Hold on. Look at that. See, see my eye? Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Oh, I made it disappear. Okay, I'm, I hope that you're more creative than that. But what I'm saying is that you have so many different talents outside of music that can actually recharge your other batteries, your batteries within music. You know, you can get that recharge if you got a passion somewhere else. If you got a passion for sports and you're able to get so much creative energy making a sports podcast, or you're able to put together some highlights for an Instagram post, or you're able to talk about your team and how excited you are about your football team this year, believe it or not, that is recharging you in other places. Why? because you're finding a source of energy that is gonna fill you up and you can take that over to your music and you'll be like, where in the hell all this energy came from? You already put that out there in the atmosphere. You already spread your creativity in other places. For some people, it may be painting. Look, I don't know how to paint, but when I paint and I do take some chances, I, I have in the past done that, it really makes my music that much better because here I am trying something that I know I'm not good at, but it's something that challenges me. It's something that puts me in another creative space and it starts to unlock almost using 
using different muscles within my creative anatomy that allow me to take that over to my music and just be free. And sometimes that's what we need. I mean, I think the big picture from this list of 12 is that you can't just obsess over what you've been doing. You can't do the same thing and expect different results. You got to put yourself out of your comfort zone. You got to challenge your comfort zone. You got to do it over and over and over again. You need resistance in order to have growth and creativity is no different. So hopefully after watching today's video, you'll be able to see at least 12 things to look out for that are killing your creativity on a regular basis. If you have any questions or videos that you want me to go ahead and do, you already know, go ahead and subscribe first of all, before you start asking questions and then go comment down below. Once again, this is Curtis King, CurtisKingBeats.com. Peace. Please subscribe to the channel below, Curtis King, CurtisKingBeats.com.